Well, hey, everybody, this is Paul Abernathy from Master the NEC as well as Electro Code Academy Incorporated. And today we're going to do a quick overview of our Fast Tracks electrical exam preparation software and course. Now, this is getting a lot of attention throughout the industry, and we're doing very well with this course here at Electro Code Academy because this is probably the only course in the industry that integrates the exam information. You have a mega exam preparation exam um, database of code questions that you can utilize, and we'll show you how to utilize that. But you also have 19 specific units that are broken down into five sections. And we also embed videos and podcasts that are uh, pertinent to the actual content at a specific location while you're learning the program. Um, so you're not just going to read information, but you're going to interact with it as well. Now, there's also a challenge simulator, which is pretty neat, but it's not really part of your course. But it's included so that you have it available. Um, but what we want to do is kind of take a, a dive into one of the sections and then look at a unit and you get to see kind of how it interacts with the unit. So you get a better understanding of what's included in your Fast Tracks program. So in this case, we'll go down. And, and one of the ways to do this when you're preparing for an exam is you literally move through each one of these units one at a time. Okay, one at a time. So let's go into unit one. And what you'll get is an overview. Now, this is an introduction to the National Electrical Code. So it's a great overview. Overviews kind of will tell you what to expect in the unit. Uh, and then the reading material is actually your course material. And there's a lot of reading that's involved in our Fast Tracks program. However, we do have a feature that allows it to read it to you so that you follow along visually. But then you're also stimulating your senses by hearing it at the same time. And it's we generally, people have heard me refer to this as ballistic training, which means it's it's hitting all the senses. You're visually seeing it, you're reading it, and then you're hearing it, and it really makes for a, 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 to solidify the learning experience. And you can't get that from any other program. And also, the graphics that are in this program uh, are not the black and white one-line drawings that, that you see in a lot of other type of training stuff. And you're really not just paying for a book and DVDs here. You're getting an interaction. There's end-of-unit reviews, and there's exam questions. And the end-of-unit reviews are literally graded by us here at Electrical Code Academy, and we will send you results of that test, of that review. So let's kind of look at it here. So if you look at the reading, and you always want to start at Unit 1 and move your way through it, go to your chapter introduction, and this kind of gives you an introduction of what you're going to cover in this unit. And so you have a firm understanding, because a lot of this information you're going to need to answer the questions at the end of the unit. Now, it's always open book uh, and things like that. The book is always going to be available on your screen. So over here, you see this full book. So if I click this, uh, I can always have access to the full book. Here's the table of contents. You can jump right to the information, like right here. or right at the beginning. You use the arrows to navigate. And as you see over here, it's the same thing you see over here. Okay, so it's always available. You can print it out at any time. So for 365 days, you have access to it. Print out whatever you want. Okay, you have full access to it. Uh, you can bookmark any page, you can print any page, you can make the text on the page larger, as you see here, or you can make it smaller, however you want to deal with it. Now, here's the other unique thing. As you're going through the course, and we'll go on and just kind of like flip the page, and you start talking, for example, the National Electrical Code. Now, you can read this, and it's important that you do read it, but if you left click and you drag over it all the text, you'll have the option to highlight it, uh, maybe it's something important you want to make a note of to come back and look at later. Maybe you want to actually add a note. Maybe you want to add a note to ask a question to us here at Electrical Code Academy later. It will answer that question for you. So you can make a note and then later go in and copy and paste it to an email. Um, also, here's a tip. If you go to our website at uh, masterthenec.com, you can download our app. Now, if you put the app on your phone, we have a forum in there, and you can ask questions quickly in that app and get some answers while you're studying for your exam. And that's just a great way to do it because you might not want to post it on a message board or whatnot. You want to ask a question. That's a great way to do it. Um, and then, of course, you have flat. You can create flashcards as well in here. But the point that I wanted to do here when you highlighted it is you have two ways 
You can read it and you get to listen to it. So once it's highlighted, you can either click read text here or you can go up here and click this little icon right here and that brings up the read speaker and they'll read it to you as well. But since we did this, I'm going to click this right here and we'll go on and listen to what it does. Just as an extensive education is required for doctors to perform the duties of their chosen field, a working knowledge of the neck is a necessity for anyone practicing a profession in the electrical industry. The neck. Okay, so you get to have it read to you. You're following along. You follow the bouncing ball, if you will. And there's something about that sensory training that not only being able to read it, following along, following the bouncing ball, but also hearing it just does something to help you retain this information. And so you simply move through the presentation. It goes to the very beginning. So you learn the history of the National Electrical Code, how everything started, and you simply move through it, the purpose of the NEC and everything like that. So here you see you go through. There's a lot of information about how to do a public input, a public comment, to really be a part of the National Electrical Code and be a part of the development process. Again, the National Electrical Code is created for you by people like you. Okay, so that's an example there. Now, let's move into a little more. See here, you've got an end of unit quiz, so we're going to actually test you. So let's just to show you how that works. Every unit has an end of unit quiz. Now, the very first one is a little easier because it's the introduction, but then they slowly get a little harder and test your knowledge. So all we're doing here is, is testing. So for example, here the question is, what type is used, uh, what term is used for the numerical listing where the NEC requirements are located, for example, 210.19. So is that a section, box, notes, or part, okay? Because so I know this is sections, and so you want to, you can either submit your work or go through and do all of them and see what you got wrong or what you got right. Or since it's just a review, you could actually check my work right now and it'll tell you whether you got it right here. It's correct. Now, if I had gotten it wrong, now let me show you what happens in our quizzes if you get it wrong. So let's just go to the next one and get it wrong here. Blank means that electrical equipment, material and service meet uh, appropriate designated standards or have been tested and found suitable for a specific purpose. So is that accredited, listed, certified, or compliant? Well, we know it's listed, but let's go on and click certified and see what we get. Okay, it's incorrect. Okay, so you see that it's marked incorrect, and you see that when you put your mouse over it, it highlights the information. Okay, so now when you click on that, you can go up and click on this, and it'll actually take you in the course. See, the book opens up on the right. This is so neat. It'll come up and you actually will see that it's labeled and listed. So in our case here, the answer would be listed. Okay. All right. So here you see the term note under listed. Okay. So all of that information here uh, is available to you and you're able to get access to it pretty darn quickly through the program like that. So, uh, so you move on through it. Now, that's your quiz. Okay, and you simply move through each unit. Now, I wanted to show you a little more detailed unit so you can kind of see some of the things you're going to get here. So this is your unit on boxes and enclosures, very detailed. As you can see here, there's a podcast on Boxville. There's a, a video. There's a couple videos in here uh, that you're going to watch. Uh, but one of the interesting things, if you look at the reading material um, and you start in, you're going to get your objective. You need to read the objective to know what you're going to cover. But now you start to get some really detailed graphics that's going to help you understand things a little better. Not black and white. These are full color, detailed, dimensional graphics to help you out. Here's an example. It's talking about the uh, cubic inch volume of a box. And it all relates. So you notice to help you out, every graphic has what's called an identifier. So it's talking about B. B goes right here, and in this one, obviously, A, 21.5, is dealing with the question. That's the minimum volume for this size box per table, 314.16A is 21.5 cubic inches. Now, the interesting thing about this learning program is anytime you see code references like this, it, it's between these arrows, you want to look it up in your code book. You always want to read the material, see it here, have your code book with you, and then look up the code sections. It's important because it's all about getting you used to going in and out of the National Electrical Code. So anytime you see these brackets, you definitely want to look it up in the code book. Uh, and uh, it just helps you 
have that memory retention for the training. Here you see another book graphic. Here's another one to look up right here, as you can see. Uh, and it talks about, again, this is a non-metallic box here that we're talking about, 18 cubic inches. Um, so as you can see, the graphics are really, really detailed, and it moves you through every single aspect. And anywhere you see brackets, you want to look up the, the actual code reference between that bracket to better, get a better understanding. And you can follow the arrows. It'll explain. And this one, of course, is mud rings, and it's marked on it. Uh, all of that type of material here. So that's everything that you have as far as that in the reading. And again, you can also have it play it out loud to you as well. That's one of the options that you can have. Here's the big thing. So you have those end of unit quizzes like we just did before, five of them. And it's good to kind of refresh your memory on what you learned uh, inside the unit itself. But here's the one thing that makes us extremely unique from any other system out there on the market anywhere and that is your unit review questions this is this is amazing and we're committed to helping you learn by doing it and grading these in unit reviews for you so when you read this unit you're going to understand box fill calculating boxes here's an example of doing a y and x for a pull box um, and so this is neat so here you're physically going to have to type in the code reference uh, you just don't guess. We're going to grade you on the code reference, okay? And so there, and then over here, you actually give your answer, whether the answer is A, B, C, or D. If it's A, then you just put A in there. And you just answer the questions. Right here, it says a non-metallic extension um, can be run in any direction from an existing outlet, but shall not be run on the floor or within blank from the floor. Okay, so we're talking about, so you'd find your answer in the code, put it in there, whatever the code section would be, and then over here you would actually put the answer. In this case, remember, on an exam, it's really important to get the information right. So right here, it wants the answer in inches, okay? So if it was one foot, and you put one foot here, you would be wrong. The answer would be, you know, if it was 12 inches or 6 inches or whatever it would be, that is what you want to put in here. So you go through every one of these, and then you you would click Submit, and you would upload that to us, and we will grade it, and you'll be able to go back. When you go look at your grade, you'll see comments, and the comments will tell you which ones you got wrong and why you got it wrong. Uh, another way you could do this is you could actually download this and fill it out with a pen, and then you could come in because you can print it right here, and then you would come back and you could upload it, the printed edition, you just save the file as a PDF or whatever document, and we will grade it that way as well. So, But much easier just to take your time and do these online and submit them into the program. There's no other program out there that does that. Okay, So that is unique, and we will interact with you and give you the answers to your questions. Now, you should get all these answers through your reading material, uh, and if you're doing the test, okay, you can do the test. Let me let's do this again, bring this up. And you're saying, okay, well, one thing that I can do is I still got the material, but I can go in there and read about it. So see, here's unit three. So if I need to look something up to try to answer a question, then I can do this. And that's kind of one of the things I'm looking up here. So like, for example, we did volatile. So here's the non-metallic boxes. And then we had the additional markings and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So all of the information is here. Okay, All you have to do is, is look it up. Uh, and that's what's unique about the program is it allows you to seamlessly work back and forth. And I don't know any program out there in the industry that can do something like that. OK, so the books are always available for you to do that. Even when you're answering these questions, you want to be able to utilize. So utilize some of your features over here. All right. So I'm going to close that down and kind of give you the other run through here. So as you see, you have all of those units you watch. You have to watch all of these videos and I'll kind of show you how this works. So let's do this video so you can kind of see what happens on your screen. As you'll see a video comes up right here and you'll click it and you can enlarge the screen or whatnot. But here's your video. Hey everybody, welcome to the Electrician's Boot Camp. My name is Scott Pomerico. Today we'll be talking a little bit about voltage drop and the importance of voltage drop. You've probably seen a couple of my other videos. This one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, 
Okay, so you have a video that's incorporated into it, and you'll watch it at any time. And, of course, you can X out of it and get you back to it. So we have a lot of videos that are incorporated. Not all of them are created by us, but there's quite a few that are created by us in the program that you can utilize. All right, so you move through each one of these units. Here's that one I did on derating demystified. It explains the, the deal with sizing conductors and, and uh, adjustment and corrections and all that kind of good stuff. is all incorporated into the program. All right, so as you kind of move through this unit, you'll move through each section. And, of course, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, you have one family dwellings, and then you have the load calculation. And you see there's a video that I've put out on load calculations that you'll watch at this specific time. But this is something neat. So if you look at the – and here's a webinar I did that is incorporated into it. Uh, but you look at the rating. This is something else that is really unique in this program to help you understand how to do the calculations. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into it. And you're going to be walked step by step through sizing using 220.12, the floor area, everything. You're going to be walked through it step by step, how to gather the information, what's considered an appliance, what's household cooking equipment. Uh, and here's the neat thing. You're going to get these little charts that you fill in the blank that you use in order to do your load calculations. Now, print these off. You can use these uh, forever. Okay, and doing your calculations. So here's another example. I'll click this plus, and you'll see that it comes up to an even larger screen here on the right, and you can uh, maneuver back and forth if you want it, or you can print the thing. Uh, so here is a print. You click print. You can print this form off, and you can fill it in and work on it offline. Uh, and so as you move through it, this is the form you're going to need. So then what we do is we give you a single-family dwelling. So it is real world, man. You're going to work this out, and you're going to figure out how you come up with a load calculation. So this is what's unique, and we'll do this for the standard method. And here you see we'll even walk you through how to use this form, how to fill it out. Uh, and it's just so unique in, in how this is interactive and really gets you working rather than sitting at a boot camp or sitting at somebody just chewing your ear off for a whole weekend. And you're like, what am I really learning? W what am I getting? What am I going to retain? Here we're going to literally teach you how to do all these things. So it goes through every step, and you'll get to know that these are the same steps you would use to create a standard method. And we do the same thing for an optional method. Another interesting thing is that even when you do an optional method calculation, you still have to know how to do the standard when you're sizing the neutral conductor. So that's important for you to learn both. And again, we cover both of those things and the neutral conductor calculation all in this program. All right, so then you're going to have your end of units. And again, you got those review questions. So look, there is so many questions that you're going to go through literally over a thousand plus questions that you're going to have in here. Uh, flashcards are neat as well. Check us out. So I got a flashcards. Rather than you've heard me talk about making your own flashcards, you don't need to do that here. You've got flashcards that are incorporated, although it does allow you to even create your own. Here, you can create your own cards if you want to make them online and test yourself. But this is neat. So, for example, calculated load for each laundry circuit in a dwelling unit. Okay, so what is the calculated load? You might say, okay, is it uh, 1500 VA? Well, I don't know. Let's flip the card. There you go, 1500 VA. So it teaches you all of the aspects of dealing appliance. Now you're saying, what is, what is an appliance? You know, even if you don't know the answer to it, the key is keep going through the cards. Check this out. Utilization equipment built in standard sizes and types. For dishwashers, appliance, uh, disposers, appliance, all of them are built slightly different in design, but they're built in a standardized size for their application. For example, dishwashers go underneath the counter. They're built in a specific width, depth, diameter, and purpose. So they're considered appliances. So there's just so many things that you can learn, non-coincidental loads. Okay, You don't have to get the definition 100% accurate. You just have to understand the concept. So non-coincident loads are two loads that are not to be run at the same time. So we'll go here and it says two or more loads that are unlikely to be used at the same time. So you get to start understanding why is it important? Okay, why is it important to understand what non-coincidental loads are? Because when you start to do the calculations for the AC versus heat, then if they are non-coincidental loads, means when the heat's on, the AC is not running, then you can take the whichever of those two is the largest and you get to discount the other. Okay, so there's 
many reasons that you need to know these terminologies. So that's all built into this program. That's what makes it so unique. And for $315, I don't know anything out there in the industry that is this detailed. Service equipment, that's another module that talks about all service equipment. Again, some of the best graphics. Now, the graphics are created by a gentleman named Phil Simmons. And Phil uses the same software that I use. Okay, We use Corel Draw. And there's a, only a few of us in the industry that create our own graphics. And Phil is one of them. And he does an amazing job with his graphics. Uh, and so here's an example where it talks about A. And A is talking about the overhead. And then, of course, uh, you've got B right here. What is the B? Okay, and it is the you know talking about the raceway or the support and the termination. And you notice that it's got these brackets again, these 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 aero chevrons or whatever. That means you need to look up these code sections in your code. So you see, it's interactive. You're with it. You've got your code book. You're working through it. I don't know any other system like that, but this is unique. And again, you've got your end of unit questions. And just to show you again, this is not going to be a fly by night type of program. We have to grade these things. You have to come in and put the code reference that, that where you got this answer from. You've got to do that. And you need to put your answer. In this case, it says the point of attachment of the service drop conductors to the building must not be less than blank feet above finished grade. Okay, 10 feet. So if it's 10 feet, then you're going to write 10 feet. You can just do that if you want, or you can do 10 feet if you want, or however you want to do it. And But you need to tell us where you got it because the whole purpose here is to get you looking up and looking through the code. That's the whole purpose of the program. So you do them, fill them all out, follow all these questions, read them very carefully, and then you submit them, and we will grade them, and then your results will be in your actual grading area, and you can go look at your grades. Okay? All right, so that's uh, what's uh, unique about the system there uh, when it term in terms of that. Um, so let's see what else do we have. Let's go and close that up there. And of course, we do it for multifamily and even commercial calculations, specialty. Here's another thing I wanted to show you: healthcare. So we go into all of the nuances that deal with healthcare, and it has its own exam and its own unit: uh, nursing, patient care, vicinity, ambulatory care, grounding and bonding that's associated with healthcare facilities. Uh, patient care spaces, all of this stuff, life safety, critical branch. All of this stuff is so critical, and we break it down in this program for you to better understand it. So that is amazing. Now, with all that said, there is so much information in this program, and we are running out of time. Uh, there's commercial calculations, multifamily, one family, two family, optional standby. Uh, but here's the other feature you get. You get access to the Mega Exam Preparation Exam Portal. Here you read, watch my video that talks about identifying the root because that's going to help you in your exams. But you have what's called professional exam practice exams, and they're part of our Fast Tracks program. Here you've got, as you can see on the screen, you have a ton of practice exams. Now these practice exams are not timed. You can take your time, and we expect that you would. You need to answer as you're in this course Every week, you need to be dedicated to do at least one. And don't worry whether it says maintenance or journeyman or residential or master. It doesn't matter because I get these calls all the time. People say, is your course for a master or journeyman or residential? Uh, what is it for? And it's for the National Electrical Code, my friends. So it doesn't really matter because all the questions are going to be code NEC-based questions. And that's what you're really trying to learn. So if I go into this maintenance program, for example, and here's the neat thing. It replicates the same situation that you would be in an exam. Now, these aren't timed, but we do have some timed ones that we'll show you here in a second. But here's what's neat. So you have 25 of them. Each one of these tests have 25 of them. Overall, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of exam quality questions. Okay. So, for example, a neutral conductor is a conductor that, number one, shall be identified only by white colored insulation. Well, we know that's not true. It can be white or gray. Number two, shall be identified by green colored insulation only? Uh, no. Number three, is intended to carry current under normal conditions? Mm hmm And number four, is not intended to carry current under normal conditions? Well, that would be an equipment ground conductor. So the answer is going to be this one. Now, here's what's neat. I'm going to click continue. And you see that I got that correct. 
But here's what's neat. Whether you're in the 14 code or the 17 code in this program, it's going to tell you the code reference. It's going to tell you what page it is. So if I've got it wrong, it's still going to give me the answer to where to find the answer so that I can learn from it. And I'll show you that. So let's go to the next one and do that and get one wrong. Okay, so the ampacity of a conductor is defined by the NEC to be the maximum current in amperes a conductor can carry continuously under the conditions of use without exceeding the allowable voltage drop limitations. Uh, no, as we all know, voltage drop is not a mandatory requirement except for fire pumps and emergencies, but under normal circumstances, it is an informational note, so that couldn't be it. It's rated voltage, it's temperature rating, it's melting point, okay? All right, so one of the things to remember you can't exceed the temperature ratings, but we want to make sure that we want to click the wrong one. So let's do this so you can see what you get. Boom, incorrect. And it's going to tell you where to go. Article 100, page 70, to, uh, 70 which is actually the NFPA 70. So it's page 27 in the 14 code. In the 2017 code, it's page 33. So isn't that extremely helpful? Because even if you get it wrong, you get to go look it up again in order to read it to get a better understanding of each question and i expect you to look every one of these up all right so anyway that's kind of what we do with that now you've got tons of them here that's the beauty of it master level sign again don't worry that it's signed it's still going to be nec related um but let's go on and look now at what we're really 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 excited about is your final exams there are three of them in here a journeyman's master and a residential and they're all equally tough but here's the thing they are timed and as you can see here once you start this program this is going to replicate an exam okay so i'm going to get it started just kind of give you an idea here what we're looking at all right so as you can see here there is 100 questions okay now which of the following is not required to be marked on the nameplate of a transformer. Interesting, right? Now that's a journeyman's exam question, <laughs> okay? So the maximum overcurrent protection, the manufacturer, KVA rating, or voltage? Well, let's see, the one that's not, let's choose that. Correct, and it gives you again the code, set, the code reference to where you would see that information. And if it's wrong, it'll do that as well. And you get to move through the questions. So I'll go on to the next one. And so you answer all these questions, and it will help you go along. But this one is timed, okay? It's about two minutes a question, all right? So let me go on and end that. Um, so you get three of those here. So again, 100, 200, 300, and then the, the, the number of practices you get at 25 each, you're well over 800 exam questions, plus all the questions that are here at the end of your unit. All of these questions that you send in for review, like this one right here, under Unit 12, Competency Test. Look at all the questions. There's 39 of them here. You physically have to look it up, and you have to answer the question. And it's not always a multiple choice answer here. You have to look it up and read the question very carefully. And here's the other beautiful thing. We're going to grade it for you. <laughs> so your program is literally getting a dedicated educator to answer your questions and try to answer in a way that you can understand it so that you learn something from it. In many cases, our instructors might say, go back and read that uh, page again in your, in your workbook. Go back and look at it before they give you the answer because they want you to learn. So we're still giving you this. So this is why we don't do the ultimate guide anymore because we are still interacting with you during the fast tracks and it is a third of the price. It's just, I don't know of anything else that does anything like this. If you know of something, you let me know, but there is nothing that interacts like this. Now, as if that wasn't enough, you also now have to take a section test and the section test is going to cover that entire section. And this is also timed. Here's your timer. Check it out. It's clicking down. So that's another 67 questions that you have to really work hard to answer all these questions and move through it because you're being timed. It's just a, uh, you can submit for grading, and it, uh, I, I, you know, I don't know what else I can say. It is just an amazing program. Hopefully you will take advantage of it. And, and so 
Um, if you registered for a program and you're in the demo or you registered the program and you want to know how to activate your key, uh, you'll get instructions when you order the program. But just to show you, if you're in the demo and you get into it and you have the 14 days demo program, uh, you only get one day access to the fast tracks. But you'll get 14 days of access to Cengage Unlimited with the, with the demo program or your free trial. Um, to activate it, you go over here to your profile button on the left and you go down to My Subscriptions. And in My Subscriptions, you'll get a key code from us when you purchase our fast tracks program. And then what you'll do is you'll go over here and it says register key. You'll click on that and this is where you put the key that we send you. And then you register it once you put that key in there. And then you'll have your 365 day access to the Fast Tracks program. So uh, hopefully you got something out of this. There's my wife there. Thank her for letting us use this program today to present it for you. So hopefully you got something out of it, folks. Till next time, stay safe and God bless.